In a previous video, I started making this down-firing ported subwoofer enclosure. Now the box is all put together and ready for upholstery, but we don't want to get started with that quite yet because we want to add some cool accents and detail to the top of the box. In this video, I'm going to be showing you the custom fabrication process for making these inserts. By adding these inserts to the top of the enclosure, we can make it match what our vehicle's theme is and we can make the box have much more of a pleasing look. Look. I'm Mark, welcome to Car Audio Fabrication, the show where together we learn how to master car audio and how to design, build, and install our dream car audio system. Let's get started. So in that previous video where I built this subwoofer enclosure, I didn't have a chance to show you guys yet because I had not attached the top. But now the top is attached, so I did want to point out in that video, I went over how I rabbited this side piece in order to prep for the wrapping of the upholstery materials. And now you can see how I have this nice gap all the way around the outside. And the other thing that I didn't do quite yet in that previous video is I did not add this round over until now. You can see that this round over that I did on the router with this round over bit that you see on screen, this round over gives the port a nice flare, allowing the air to move in and out effectively. But the most important thing is it gives me this nice transition gap that I can cut my upholstery materials once I wrap this box. Having a plan is really important and I wanna walk you through the process of how I plan out my shapes for those inserts that I showed you. But really quick, what do you do when you wanna come up with a plan for the gear that you're using in your car audio system? Well, I wanna take a quick second to thank monthly channel sponsor, Crutchfield. On the Crutchfield website, you can use their vehicle selector tool to enter your year, make, and model of your particular vehicle. Their research will allow you to determine what head units are compatible, what speakers, and what other products you need in order to integrate with a factory system in your car. When it comes to planning the gear for your car audio install, you definitely want to check out Crutchfield. You can take advantage of a special offer for car audio fabrication fans at the link here on screen or down in the video description. Before we make a single cut for the shapes on top of the box, we need to choose our materials that we're going to be finishing this with. The reason we should pick our materials first in the process is one, it allows us to determine what the exact gap should be between our different pieces so that we can have a nice tight fit that will hold the pieces together. And Two, it gives us an understanding of how many different materials we're going to want to incorporate when we're coming up with the different shapes on top of our box. The rule of thumb is we want to use three or four different materials for the finish of our project. So in my case, I'm going with this kind of gray carpet. I have this gray wood material that we talked about in a previous video that I'm going to be using on top. And then I'm going to trim it with this kind of burgundy red. It's a darker red. It's more of a luxurious color and it will accent well with the two different colors of dark gray and light gray. And then I know I want to incorporate my own logo on this. So I'm going to be using this kind of brushed acrylic just to kind of brand the enclosure and show off that it's mine. I'll be cutting a different panel. So I know that I'm using four different materials. I can keep that in mind as I come up with my shapes on top of the enclosure. Now I start this process with laying out the shapes now the shapes that I'm going to be using are these guys right here, the smart templates from Mobile Solutions. What I've come up with is that I'm going to use the number seven shape here for my outside of my insert. This will be attached to the box for this piece to press inside of it. Then the number six here, that's what I'm going to use to cut out that gray wood as well as my piece that's going to be wrapped in the red vinyl upholstery material. And then I'm also going to accent this shape by combining this shape with this shape here. The reason I'm doing that is I'll have this shape here that will allow me to have an insert for my piece of acrylic that I can put my logo on. Generally I like to sketch the overall shape on top of the enclosure first and I start that process with measuring out in order to determine the center line and then marking that line. The templates have these lines on them here that I can use to line up and make sure that our shape is completely centered. I can then trace my various shapes in order to get an idea what this is going to look like. So I can take these off here and now we have an idea especially with the combination of these two shapes what we're going to be looking at and I like it. Let's kick things off with making this outer shape first. So after using the flush trim bit on the router to copy this shape, 
we have our first piece here that's going to go on top. Now I'm not gonna separate the template from the shape quite yet because I do wanna add a chamfer to this profile first. And the chamfer is this bit here. And the reason I'm not removing the template yet is I wanna maximize the amount of cut that I can go into the material with the bit so that bearing needs to still ride against the template since it's not going to have enough room up top here to ride against the wood. So this gives me this outer profile here that's going to be attached to the box and the carpet's gonna wrap up and over and tuck into this edge here. And I made this out of three quarter inch material because I'm gonna have that quarter inch gray wood material underneath and then another half inch piece for this template shape. So that'll give me a total of three quarters of an inch so these two will match. Next up here, I need to combine these two different shapes to make our insert trim. And I'm going to do that by taking these two different shapes and copying them to a piece of quarter inch that I'm going to use for a template. So I've created my combination master template here, and now I'm gonna transfer it to the piece of wood that is actually going to be used permanently on the enclosure. I am going to do a couple of unique things here though. First of all, instead of just flush trimming the outside of this shape, I'm actually going to expand it slightly in order to shrink the gap between these two pieces. The inside cuts are going to be a little bit different too because I'm gonna use a larger router bit size than usual. This is actually a three quarter inch router bit if you look in comparison to a half inch you can see how it's slightly larger the reason I'm doing this is it will slightly expand this radius right here if I were to flush cut with a small quarter inch flush trim bit, it's gonna be really hard for me to tuck the vinyl down into this super sharp corner. But by using this larger flush trim bit in order to make the copy, it's actually going to expand that radius and it'll be much more easy to wrap the vinyl into that tight corner without having any wrinkles. It's going to look a lot more perfect using this. This piece here is the piece that I just expanded off of the master template. And you can see that we now have zero clearance between this piece and our outer piece because I expanded this edge. Because these two pieces are currently flush, I do need to make some sort of gap for the materials to fit between them. So for that, I'm just going to use a rabbiting bit that removes some of the material. I had to do those steps because the initial gap between the different smart templates for the materials that I'm using is just slightly too large. So by doing that, I now have the perfect gap size for my upholstery material. You'll notice my insert is sitting a little low right now and that's because I haven't cut this quarter inch piece of wood that's going on the inside yet. Let's do that now. The only thing I have left to do is I need to do some profiles on this insert piece here. I think what I wanna do is I'm gonna do a round over on this inside edge. The round over will give a nice flowing feel to the inside. Now the last cutting pass we need to make here is I need to make some clearance for my acrylic insert that's gonna go inside of here. And I also wanna make some clearance for when I go to wrap this with the vinyl material on each side. To do this, I'll be using this quarter inch rabbiting bit. Quarter inch means that it is a quarter inch distance from the edge of the cutting flute to the bearing that it's gonna cut into the material. And I can of course control the height in and out of the table. I can use that as an edge to cut the material away using a razor blade. Now we can really start to get a feel for how this is going to look. In the meantime, I laser etched this acrylic panel here with my logo on it. I really like how that turned out. I think this is gonna look super classy with that red luxurious vinyl going on and the carpet. 
definitely want to check back in and see how it turns out. So I hope this video helped give you some ideas on how you can customize a subwoofer enclosure with these inserts and adding these cosmetic shapes. Next time you're planning out your gear for a car audio install, definitely check out Crutchfield and see how they can help. You can visit them at the link here on screen or down in the video description. To see future tutorials and build videos, I'd love to have you as a subscriber and you can check out some of my other videos here on screen. A special thanks to Lonnie, Ali, William, Marcos, Jerry, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. A big thanks to those guys for making these videos possible. As always, my friends, thank you guys for watching.